We are back and live worldwide, not just here with WMAY on 92.7 WMAY. Springfield's News and Talk. I'm Greg Bishop, but uh, back at it on YouTube Live, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and uh, after a few tech issues, I'm going to have to uh, break everything down and uh, give another rework here, <clears throat> self-producing all of this, you know, uh, as I do each and every weekday morning from 6 to 9. But let's get right into it here on WMAY, uh, where we have every morning morning uh, we've been on the air going through some of the particulars of the challenges against Illinois gun law uh, and the ban that was in effect January 10th when Governor JB Pritzker enacted that ban and uh, you're looking at more than 170 different firearms that are listed that are considered quote assault weapons and then you've got magazines of more than 10 rounds for rifles more than 15 rounds for handguns those are banned uh, for people who have those they can get a thousand dollars fine a petty offense uh, per instance but if you do not register your grandfathered semi-automatic rifles that are on this list by January 1st of 2024 you could face a up to class 2 felony now the window to start registering those weapons in Illinois with the Illinois State Police is October 1st when they are going to launch the portal for people to register their firearms and in particular the um, serial numbers that are on those firearms so uh, you've got that in effect. It's been now, what, uh, a month and almost a week? Uh, so we're, we're looking at uh, approaching five weeks here of this weapons ban being in place and the lawsuits stacking up. You've got four lawsuits in state court. All four of them have temporary restraining orders against the state from enforcing that, and that's impacting thousands of people. In federal courts, you've got um, four or five different cases, uh, four of them in particular in the Southern Districts where uh, there are... Uh, three where the judge in that case has ordered the state to provide a list of all of the items banned not just the firearms all of the items banned uh, so it'll be interesting to see uh, when exactly they have to provide that response there's three dates with three different lawsuits one's like 28th of february another one's like march 1st and the other one's march 2nd they might consolidate that to have one unified response from the state for all three of those cases but there's a fourth case out there as well from the federal firearms licensees of illinois that uh, is dealing just with the gun ban not with the magazine ban but the national shooting sports foundation they have one of the three cases uh that uh, the state is set to respond to with that list of items. I connected with uh, Mark Oliva. He is with the National Shooting Sports Foundation, uh, and he shared with us uh, some of the uh, kind of overview and the status of where we're at in the conversation of that lawsuit and uh, why they're pursuing this. So NSSF's case uh, challenging uh, Illinois' uh, gun ban law is uh is still sitting before the federal judge we expect him to be taking action on that in a couple of weeks we are uh, of course challenging the law as unconstitutional and requesting a preliminary injunction to uh stay the law uh in its whole in its entirety uh we understand that there is uh, other challenge there are other challenges to this uh, law that have uh, uh been caused for this to be stayed against uh certain um the parties that were uh, challenging it, but it has not been applied uh, statewide. So we're continuing to seek an injunction that will provide relief to uh, all residents of Illinois and all businesses of Illinois that are being affected by this unconstitutional law. So when I uh, chatted with uh, Mark yesterday, uh, we, we delved a little bit further into uh, some of the members he has, some of the gun store members that he has and how they're being impacted by all of this. So this this law is uh, went into effect immediately, and it uh, immediately affected the ability for those businesses to be able to sell the most popular selling center fire rifle in America today. The AR-15, or whatever, the modern sporting rifle, style rifle, is the most popular selling rifle in America today. It is. Uh, there are over 24.4 million of these rifles in circulation today. And to kind of put that into perspective, there are more of these rifles in circulation than there are Ford F-150s on the road today. So when we talk about the popularity of this rifle, it is uh, it is not just the most popular rifle. It is it is an ubiquitous rifle. It is out there, uh, um, commonly owned, commonly used, and and by the definitions according to Heller and and the Bruin decision, that certainly qualifies for constitutional protection for the right to keep and bear this uh, this uh, rifle. By the governor signing this into law, he has restricted the ability, uh, he has, he has stri essentially stripped the ability of 
uh, of lawful uh, firearm retailers in the state to be able to provide this this rifle and the magazines that go along with it to uh, to Illinois uh, residents who would otherwise qualify to possess this legally possess this rifle. So it is uh, certainly impacting the ability for those uh, businesses to be able to service their customers. So again, uh, hearing from Mark Oliva, he is with the National Shooting Sports Foundation, one of several plaintiffs in one of four federal cases in the Southern District of Illinois, and uh, hearing how exactly the law that bans these commonly held rifles, he says, are um, impacting not just individuals, but also uh, businesses, and uh, who exactly are these businesses that are being impacted uh as far as those retailers yeah so uh, these are retails you got to say most of the uh retails that are selling firearms today are your mom and pop shops these are the people who live and work in these communities have deep family roots in these communities and they and they want to be able to continue to operate their lawful businesses uh in these communities uh they they follow all the regulations uh both set by the federal government and the onerous regulations that have been la- uh, layered on top of them by the state to be able to operate their businesses uh and so these are these are people who live and work in these communities they go to the same churches uh, as everyone else they they have their children attend the same schools they, they are the fabric of these communities so to see that they are being uh, tarnished and labeled uh, with a very broad brush uh, as as purveyors of something that is illegal is is disheartening and is frustrating to to many of these businesses but this is why we as the trade association are standing up and, and saying that these are, in fact, lawful and constitutionally protected firearms that are used for lawful reasons and purposes every day to include hunting, recreational target shooting, and, yes, self-defense. So, again, uh, Mark Oliva with uh, National Shooting Sports Foundation, and uh, he also talked about some of the activity in the courts thus far where they've had their lawsuit. They filed for an injunction, and the state uh, has requested in a different lawsuit an extension for a response. But it looks like the federal judge in that case uh, has said that the state, uh, they are ordered to provide a list of all items banned, and that's significant. Uh, Mark, uh, sharing some thoughts about that yeah so i, I think and in, in if you read through our challenge on this and their request for preliminary injunction uh th- this is this is cutting this is pretty uh, cut and dry case of, of unconstitutional law that has been passed in the state if you look at the definitions of heller and you look at the definitions of bruin of what is protected and those those firearms that are in common use they're commonly owned are protected by the constitution uh for uh for lawful citizens to be able to uh, keep and bear those arms uh, I think when you see uh, the judge is taking a, a sober look at this law and a sober look at the uh, the instructions that have been passed down by uh, the Supreme Court, especially in the Bruin decision that said that the the two part or two step uh, interest bearing test that many of the courts have been using prior to Bruin were unconstitutional, that there is, you know, there the specifically in the Bruin decision, they said there is uh, two steps that two-step test was one step too many, that the only test for whether or not a law is uh, constitutional uh, regarding guns is the Second Amendment. So that that is the test. So when they start looking at this and they start asking the the government to uh, list out the types of firearms that they are saying it must be banned under this state law, it tells me that the courts are looking at this with a sober eye and saying that you know if these are these are firearms that are in common use and, and commonly owned, then those are protected by the Constitution. That is the crux of the challenge that NSSF is also bringing in our case and, and seeking uh, seeking relief is that these are firearms that are that are commonly owned, commonly used, and they are protected by the Constitution. So it, it I think that this law, and I've said this to many others since since it was signed into law, is on very shaky legal ground. I think it is ripe for challenge. So we'll see where the challenge ultimately goes, but it might be uh, sometime in uh, April when we see the judge actually decide on the fate of an injunction that uh, plaintiffs in all of these cases are looking for. Not just the NSSF case, but the State Rifle Association case, also the Federal Firearms Licensees of Illinois case, also the plaintiffs in the uh, Crawford County case that was transferred from state court to federal court, as well as eventually with the 
state level cases uh, where there's a temporary restraining order in place for thousands of plaintiffs being safe from enforcement of Illinois' gun ban. Uh, so again, some of the latest analysis from the individuals suing the state, and we'll be watching closely as to uh, all of the movements in those cases and